Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson, and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. How many planets are in our solar system? Is it eight or nine? For a long time, children around the world were taught that our solar system had nine planets, including a small, distant one named Pluto. But in 2006, Pluto was reclassified. It was no longer considered a real planet, and the official number of planets dropped to just eight. Why did this happen? Why was Pluto removed from the list of planets? And what exactly is a planet anyway? In today's episode of Thinking in English, we'll look at what exactly a planet is, why Pluto used to be a planet but isn't anymore, and how science changes over time. We'll also talk about the history of planet discoveries like Neptune and Uranus, and how our understanding of the solar system has developed. This episode is also a great chance to learn scientific vocabulary and practice thinking critically in English. We'll explain important terms like planet, orbit and gravity, and I'll discuss some fascinating facts about space, science and definitions themselves. So, is Pluto really a planet or not? Well, let's find out. You can find a full and free transcript for this episode on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts and on my website. And if you want ad-free episodes, make sure to become a Patreon subscriber where there are ad-free, commercial-free episodes. Here is today's vocabulary list. Planet Planet A large round object in space that orbits a star, like the sun. For example, Earth is the only planet in our solar system known to support life. Solar system. Solar system. The sun and all of the objects that orbit around it, including planets, moons and asteroids. For example, the solar system includes eight planets, dozens of moons and countless asteroids. Orbit. Orbit. To move around something in a circular or elliptical path. As in, the moon orbits the Earth once every 27.3 days. Astronomer. Astronomer. A scientist who studies stars, planets and other objects in space. As in, the astronomer used a powerful telescope to observe a distant galaxy. Object. Object. Anything that has a distinct shape and is considered a thing or an item, particularly in space. For example, Pluto is a small icy object located in the Kuiper belt. Telescope. Telescope. An instrument used to observe distant objects in space. As in, Galileo built one of the first telescopes and used it to study the moon. Prediction. Prediction. A statement about what will happen in the future based on evidence or reasoning. As in, the scientist made a prediction that a new planet might exist beyond Neptune. Before we can talk about Pluto, and whether or not it's a planet, we need to understand the solar system. The solar system is the name we give to the sun and everything that orbits around it. To orbit means to travel in a circular or an oval path around something. When we say that the Earth orbits the sun, we mean the Earth moves around the sun in a regular path taking one year to complete one full orbit. The solar system includes planets, moons, which orbit planets, asteroids, which are small rocky objects, comets, 
to icy objects with long tails, and other things like dust and gas. Today, scientists say there are eight official planets in our solar system. They are, in order from the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. These planets can be divided into groups. Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars are small, rocky and have solid surfaces. Jupiter and Saturn are gas giants and Uranus and Neptune are ice giants. They are much bigger, made mostly of gas or ice, and don't have solid surfaces like Earth. But the solar system doesn't end with Neptune. Far beyond Neptune is a region called the Kuiper Belt. This area is filled with icy objects, small bodies and dwarf planets. Pluto is one of those icy objects, and for a long time it was considered the ninth planet in the solar system. The solar system is much bigger and more complex than many people realise. It's not just eight planets. There are hundreds of thousands of objects moving through space, and our knowledge of the solar system beyond Neptune is very limited. When people in the past looked at the night sky, they could see five planets with just their eyes. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. These planets have been known since ancient times and by cultures across the world. But the next planet, Uranus, is much harder to see without a telescope. It wasn't discovered until 1781 by a British astronomer named William Herschel. This was a big moment in science, as it showed that there could be more planets out there that we just couldn't see with our eyes. Later, scientists noticed that Uranus wasn't moving exactly as expected. Something seemed to be pulling on it with gravity. A prediction was made that another large planet must be out there beyond Uranus. Incredibly, Neptune, the eighth planet, was discovered through mathematics rather than observation. The French astronomer Urban Le Verrier studied the movement of Uranus and based on his findings calculated the location and the size of Neptune without ever seeing it. He made a prediction where it would be in the sky, based on maths, and then based on his predictions, Neptune was finally discovered in 1846. After Neptune, scientists thought there might be another planet even further away. In 1930, an American astronomer named Clyde Tombow discovered a small, icy object in the sky. It was later named Pluto, and many people celebrated the discovery of the ninth planet. Pluto was very different though. It was much smaller than the other planets. Pluto is even smaller than Earth's moon. Its orbit was also strange. While most planets orbit in a neat, flat path, Pluto's orbit is tilted and stretched out. Still, Pluto was considered a planet for over 70 years, but as technology improved, scientists started discovering more and more Pluto-like objects in the same region of space, called the Kuiper Belt. In 2005, astronomers found an object called Eris that was even larger than Pluto. This created a problem. Should Eris become the 10th planet? What about all of the other similar objects? This debate led scientists to rethink the definition of what a planet actually is. So, what is a planet? For a long time, there was no official scientific definition. People just used the word planet to describe big objects that orbit the sun. But, after Pluto's discovery and especially after the discovery of Eris and other similar objects, 
astronomers realised they needed a clear and formal explanation. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union, or the IAU, made an official definition. According to the IAU, for something to be called a planet, it must meet three conditions. 1. It must orbit the Sun. This means the object moves around the Sun like Earth or Mars. 2. It must be big enough that its gravity pulls it into a round or nearly round shape. Gravity is the force that pulls things together. If an object has enough mass, if it's big enough, gravity makes it form a sphere. And three, it must have cleared its orbit. This means the planet has become the dominant object in its path. It has cleared away other rocks, ice and small objects near its orbit using gravity. Pluto meets the first two rules. It orbits the sun and it's round. But it doesn't meet the third rule. Pluto hasn't cleared its orbit. It shares its part of space with many other icy objects. Because of this, Pluto was reclassified as a dwarf planet. A dwarf planet is a space object that is round and orbits the sun but hasn't cleared its orbit. This decision caused a lot of debate. Some scientists and many members of the public were upset. People had grown up learning that Pluto was the ninth planet and didn't want to see it demoted. Even though Pluto is no longer officially a planet, it is still very important to our understanding of space. Pluto helped astronomers realise that the solar system is much bigger than we once thought. After Pluto was discovered in 1930, scientists later found many similar objects in the same region, now called the Kuiper Belt. In 2015, NASA sent a spacecraft called New Horizons to visit Pluto. It took more than nine years to reach it. When New Horizons arrived, it sent back amazing pictures and data. Before the mission, we had only seen blurry images of Pluto. But New Horizons showed us a world with mountains made of ice, smooth plains and possibly even an ocean under the surface. It also had an atmosphere and five moons. Scientists had thought Pluto would be cold, dead and boring, but it turned out to be more complex and more active than they thought. Pluto is also important because it reminds us that science is always changing. As we discover new information, our definitions and our ideas sometimes need to be updated. Ever since Pluto was reclassified in 2006, people have been asking, should Pluto become a planet again? Some scientists argue that the current definition of a planet is too strict, and even a little confusing. For example, the rule that a planet must clear its orbit is difficult to measure. Earth hasn't cleared 100% of the objects from its orbit either, so why does Pluto get disqualified? Others say that the current definition helps us to stay organised and logical. If we call Pluto a planet again, we might also need to include many other icy bodies out there. This could mean we suddenly have 50 or 100 planets. Also, some scientists argue that the word planet should mean something special. It should be a large, dominant object in the solar system not just anything round that orbits the sun. This debate is not just about Pluto. It's also related to larger questions in science. Science changes over time. Our ideas about the universe will grow as we build better telescopes, explore space further and understand more. 
the discussion over what is a planet is important because in the next century or so, we may have the ability to find even more Pluto-like objects, maybe even a full planet at the edge of the solar system where it is currently too dark to see. So here is today's final thought. Pluto may no longer be called a planet, but its discovery changed how we understand our solar system. Today, I have tried to introduce lots of scientific vocabulary while talking about the discovery and definition of Pluto. I find space fascinating and also a little overwhelming. It is so vast and dark, we know so little about the edges of our own solar system. But it's also exciting, because as we build better telescopes and technology, we might discover some incredible things that are out there in the night sky. But what do you think? Do you still consider Pluto to be a planet? Let me know by leaving a comment. You can comment on this episode on YouTube, you can comment on Spotify, or if you're a Patreon subscriber, you can comment on Patreon or on Discord. In fact, Patreon subscribers can listen to this episode ad-free with no commercials, no adverts on Patreon or on Spotify. I really encourage you guys all to become Patreon subscribers. We have conversation clubs, bonus episodes every Friday and much more. Also, the prices may be increasing very soon, so join now to get that lower price forever. Thank you guys all so much for listening to this episode. I've been enjoying making more scientific themed episodes recently. So if you have any ideas, something historical, something scientific, reach out and let me know. Give me your ideas and I will hopefully make more episodes that you guys enjoy listening to. Thank you all so much and I'll speak to you next time. Goodbye.